Hey guys, welcome back. Happy Tuesday to you. August 2nd, 2022. Spy had some volatility today. Some news, some Pelosi news, some Taiwanese news. Sup up, like up, comment down. Happy Money sticks around. We have a Twitter you can follow us on at Happy Money YT. Still waiting to hear back from Dave Lauer. Retweet that. YouTube, deep macho value. Retweet it, you've got followers. Use them. Um, we have a Discord you can get on also. Link for both those are in the description. Free to join. Um, Spy, so Pelosi, there was talks of her going to Taiwan, and then there was talks that it wasn't confirmed, and then this and that, and then just all of a sudden today, I guess she was landing in Taiwan, and the, um, the Chinese are kind of pissed about it, and so basically right here, they weren't sure if it, there was going to be like her getting shot down or something. The mark was a little bit kind of waiting on that. And then once she landed, this is basically the rally right after she landed. Um, and then kind of ripped after that. And then this was all basically from China saying um, they're going to delay shipments on Tesla and Ford vehicles. Or something for Tesla and Ford, I think it's maybe their vehicles. And then also they're shooting their... There's a rumor of them shutting down some uh, Apple factories. I don't know. They're just kind of retaliating a little bit, trying to punish punish us for sending Pelosi to Taiwan. Uh, I'm not sure if this will escalate and keep going, or if the market will react to it. Of course, if if it does keep escalating, the market probably will react. Um, we'll see, though. It's it's just another wrench in there. Um, <laughs> another wrench of news. I, I don't know why she's there, but uh, <laughs> I guess she is. <laughs> Anyways, we've got this divergence still on the spy on the daily chart here. So waiting for that CP lie. It erased my chart, but I think it's the 10th. Is that right? Raised my line next Wednesday. I think so, something like that. So we'll see where it goes from there. If it, you know, the longer it hangs out up here, the more this is a divergence and I'll think it's coming down. So really need to, uh, yeah. If it's holding support here, that's good. If it starts to break down, then uh, I'm assuming that this is the end of the bear rally, but Probably just chop in this range until CP lie. And then, I don't know, then maybe it'll come down. Crazy news today, HKD. So, Donner actually originally, originally shot this out in our Discord. Um, this is a Taiwanese, I think, IPO. So, if this is all related with China and Taiwan, I have no idea. Or no, Singapore. But, um, yeah. Uh, I actually heard this on the news, and uh, I didn't mention it, so it's already, it already, you know, it already ripped up, so it IPO'd at 13 bucks, and it was $45 when it was mentioned. Kind of when Discord, our Discord got wind of it. Um, kind of interesting. Um, and then this thing kind of just went insane. So, hit $2,500 today. And so $12, $12 to 2500 in like two weeks. One, two, well, technically four weeks? No. Thirteen, thirteen days, fourteen days. So we'll see. Um, yeah, that's definitely a risky play if you're trying to throw shares around on that. Uh, GME <clears throat> moving with the spy today, unfortunately. So AMC not so much. AMC outpaced. Uh, BBBY had a nice move and then kind of sold off. The short interest on BBBY, I guess, is over one hundred percent at this point. And Jimmy, this this wasn't the day for it. It seemed good in the morning. The volume was kind of a little higher, and then just ended up getting locked in with the spy, as you can see here. Uh, same kind of spikes, same rallies, same drops. You know, pretty much the same. It's hold, holding up nicer here in a close. Got about thirty minutes. <clears throat> but um, I mean, it's a nice day on it. Three up three point three percent. I was I was hopeful and hyped for a big day, like a thirty or forty percent day. Um, not so much. We'll see. Maybe, maybe Landis is next. Um, predict today on Monday. Maybe there'll be some hope then. Kind of interesting these days, though. Just kind of slow progression to the upside. It's pretty unusual for GameStop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like we had back here, um, basically that whole month, whole last month, it just rallied, and then steep sell off after the split. So. Uh, I'm not too sure what to make of that. I don't know if that's partially correlated with um, 
split and having more more shares in the float now or what um i, th I think we're still kind of gonna still waiting and hopeful for a big rally and potentially leading to a short squeeze from this split as far as the German brokerages and shares, I think that's getting sorted out. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of inexperienced, myself included, uh, investors that are reading into language and verbiage, which um, might not understand too much or are reading into it too much to where it's it doesn't it's not a doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, but yeah, we'll see. There's there's definitely some discrepancies there, and I'm sure it'll get sorted out one way or another. So, we still look bullish though, very bullish on the weekly chart here. We've got a nice bull flag, bullish MACD, and yeah, everything looks good. Nice slow melt up. I don't see any signs of reversal. Um, maybe a little head and shoulders forming here. Shoulder, shoulder, head. We'll see though. I mean, uh, we've been bearish on the MACD on the daily for like two weeks now or so, but this price action has been pretty supportive of this move. Uh, the volume. Volume's been just pretty low, really, not a whole lot. So really need to wait for that big volume to confirm a big move, uh, you know, like this day. And sometimes that volume doesn't happen till the end of the day. Oftentimes I feel like it doesn't, like it's just more throughout the day. Um, let's look at that, that day really quick. So yeah, even in that first hour, there was a lot, lot more volume. Oh no, not more than that day. That was three million. Interesting. So that was not even a million. Yeah, and then the afternoon it picked up. But the volume overall, the average was higher. This was a spike of volume at 1030 that first hour. This was good volume that hour and then kind of continued on higher volume and then really picked up. So kind of need volume to confirm the move. Um, trying to time the bottom or time it before it starts moving. It's, it's pretty difficult on GameStop. Uh, but I'm still stoked on August. I think we still could see uh, big action this month. We'll look for, I mean, the rest of this week could, could still be, I feel like a potential any time, honestly, or to move up crazy. And I think the last indicator, again, is just that volume where you're just, you're going to be a little late on it because it's going to already be moving, but uh, at least it'll be confirmed. Um, so my options today, I did trim out of, trim out of them. I actually made a little profit on them. I don't know where, I think here. Yeah, I, I cut out them on this candle and then actually bought back in like around here and then um, held those all the way till here. So I took a loss from the ones from here to here, made a little profit from here to here. I think overall I took a little loss today, but um, I think I practiced good risk, risk management, took a small loss and I still have capital to trade another day. So. I didn't lose, you know, from 2,500 to 1,500 today on HKD. So I'm still good. Still in the game. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've noticed, I've, I know there's screeners for options and uh, TA and stuff like that. And I was just kind of looking at Weebles here and I think I'm gonna start using it more. It's kind of, um, it's kind of awesome actually. So it's on it's on the mobile app also. Let me see how much of this you guys can see. Yeah, so you just go to screener here on the side. And then I just put in, so you go to filters. And then you can do market cap. You can, you can really just filter it down and it'll, you know, down to whatever you want as, as tight of a filter as you want. But I just did some technical indicators and Classic, so I've clicked classic pattern, and then they've got all these descending wedge, continuation, bottom top triangle, continuation wedge, pennant, head and shoulders. And then you just click into those and you click if you want it bullish or bearish, what time frame, and they'll tell you how many matches, and then hit done, and it basically just loads them right here, which is super nice. Um, and then you can click on one, and it'll load it up in your chart, but then also put it over here on the screeners. So this drop down over here, which you can't really see, but um, you've got recently viewed screeners, all stocks. So basically all those screeners that meet that criteria are all over here. I can cruise through all of them. So then if I pull it on the daily, right now it's on like head and shoulders or a diamond, I think. Right here you've got a double or double bottom. I can't remember exactly what one I had. But yeah, this is showing the double bottom that that one pulled up. 
Um, so I don't really like that one, but this one has a head and shoulders bottom, and it shows kind of the part, the pattern it, it basically pulled out for it. This one had a few of them, a lot of them. So I think I'll probably be kind of cruising this for, for plays and then trying to just play it, play it a little safer and using kind of this and then my own TA and kind of mixing it and seeing, seeing what ones are good. Um, and then of course looking for playing options on them and then looking for options that are more liquid and have good strikes and you know, this and that. So what's nice about this too is then since you, if you're basically playing with the market right now, I'd be playing it kind of bullish. The market's kind of choppy. Um, I think once this bear market rally is over, we'll know it for sure. And then I'll just be looking for bearish, basically exact, just flipping it. And then I will look for plays that are way up and try and get them on the, the way down. So right now I'm, I'm still kind of looking for bullish stuff. So today I opened up some plays with this, uh, just using the TA on here and kind of liking it. I was looking for BRCC, but it wasn't, this is probably a good play, but the options aren't too liquid. Um, kind of show this head and shoulders bottom down here, shoulder, shoulder, head. And then even the price target on here and the time frame, I like that it gives that just, um, then I can put that into options strat, which is kind of nice. Put an option strat, keep kind of a price target and a time frame. Just give some structure instead of just kind of winging it with long calls and, and puts. Um, not to say it'll always work out, but actually the the these TA indicators on Weeble have, have worked out pretty well. Um, they've been pretty accurate. Um, so I'll probably be sharing more plays like this on Discord and may maybe on, on YouTube too, for sure. So here's Tesla, like Tesla gave this head and shoulders bottom back on this day. And then this was basically their price target for it and the time frame it's giving it. So up to here in this price range and it hit it and, you know, way sooner. Um, so conservatively, you could say you could play that for that time frame. And then once it hits it, close out or do whatever you want to do. But it was even giving them back here, bottom triangle, bottom wedge, way back here. Let's see, you need enough time to let it play out. It was giving all these. And now, look at all these price, look at where the price is. It's all up in that um, price target range. So, kind of cool. I mean, it's important to learn TA also um, on your own, but this is kind of a nice, quick little cheat sheet. And then you can kind of confirm with what you like and then check options. And, anyways, I'll be doing that a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so yeah, SPY, like I said, looks like we're gonna honestly just chop around in this area, build this divergence, and then either break it or it'll start coming down, we'll be confirming it. And gee me, uh, <clears throat> today, yeah, kind of kind of, a, kind of a letdown, even though it was a nice day, three and a half percent. Still have all, all my shares, so I'm shares heavy, and I'm fine to just kind of run it with the shares until we get volume. Um, if it drops down a lot and kind of the longer time frames turn more bearish, then I will probably have to close at least margin shares. Uh, but I should be good for a while since my cost basis is pretty low, or at least lower than we are now. Um, so I've got still these 400 on here, and then got these 1250 on here. So they're all they're all green at this point. And then on the on the, the let's see the margin shares we've got. We have on here 2100 on here also oh this thing's so annoying yeah so we've got here too and then what's crazy yeah so the 2100 on here and then those other ones root had a big day today um some big stuff moving around even astra look at that some of the long-term stuff uwmc was moving birds was up 10 percent um a lot of squeezy stuff going on so <clears throat> we'll see if, if uh, Jimmy gets that action this week or next week or when exactly. AMC, of course, had a, had a bigger move, so that gives Jimmy a little headroom to rip, rip, rally. Um, I did actually even open up a play on BB. So some of you guys are calling out plays, and I'm kind of checking and, and looking at even at, at this just to get price targets and time frames and um, bottom triangle, bottom wedge. That's kind of nice. You see the triangle. It breaks out of the triangle as a price target for up there on BB. Up at uh, 760 to 810, and it gives it 36 days to get there. So probably will happen faster, but a safe way to play it would be to get until basically the end there. So that's kind of kind of what I'm what I'm doing a little bit. Um, yeah, 20 minutes to close. Let me show you guys plays. Wow. Uh, I opened up Carvana. 
Carvana player that did pretty well today. Here's basically my plays I opened and closed today on GME. Um, I'm out of all of them now at this point. Net loss a little bit, but not crazy. Um, opened up plays on ASML and Blackberry as well. So Carvana, it looks good. It, it's kind of a big mover actually. I'm bearish on it on kind of the longer term because I think there's going to be like a, a auto market crash basically. So Ally and then Carvana and all these that are basically exposed to um, the car market. Ally is a financial one, does a lot of car loans. I think this one will probably do very awful. So um, get a bearish play on this one once the market quits rallying. But this thing honestly hasn't even seen any of the rally. Which is crazy. Oh, they have dividends still. So it might have a little sell off after dividends. That's kind of typical. But I got Carvana. The chart's actually really bullish, even though I think it's gonna come down after it's done with its move. So, I mean, I'm seeing RSI divergence on here. We've got bull bullish MACD. And then we've got this green over the nine. And then volume two is coming in. And then on, just turn off the moving average. Then on Weebolt, it's giving me this double bottom. And oh, this diamond actually, yeah. Jay Hartman, you like that diamond. Uh, the diamond, diamond formation, sort of, I guess. And then, the, and then the double bottom too. So that's giving a price target of 76 days. It's kind of a long, kind of a long time on it. But 39 to 42 for target price on that one. And what I like about um, this one, I'm trying to find TA. You know, if it's giving me a price target, I'm trying to find it close to basically present. I don't want to find their indicator hit back here, you know, a month ago or three weeks ago. Um, and then I'm looking for ones that basically haven't already hit their target price. So the, the closer to today, the, the better. Um, and then the less duration. So you can change short term, medium term, long term. And then, um, yeah, and then of course, whatever other indicators. And then you want, you know, li liquid options chains. It's definitely good. A stock you're familiar with even, like kind of can know how it moves a little bit. Um, of course, there's a bunch of random ones in here that you just have no idea, but they might work out. So this one, this one kind of already got into, it's kind of almost already hit its price target, so it might be over. It's got a lot of momentum to the downside too now. So I wouldn't probably play this one, but um, finding bullish plays that are in the red is of course a great time to jump into them. But yeah, so got into Carvana. Um, and then Mara, I closed my Mara call. Bear market rally, It's I think it's slowing down. I think it's chopping, like I said. So this isn't a time where they want to hold through that. Uh, I open up this one, basically just on the TA. It's ASML, I have no idea what it is. But it's kind of, kind of the only bad thing is it's kind of hitting a, a, a resistance point here. So I'm hoping that we're just gonna, it's gonna consolidate a little bit and then break out. We've got this price target for 29 days, 656, 678 up here, showing this kind of Head and shoulders it's kind of crazy it gives a head and a shoulder like super detached i would never draw it like that but I suppose you can um a megaphone bottom which i don't know anything about i guess that's a megaphone <laughs> uh yeah so got into that one i think i got uh i got a 650 630 650 call debit spread just for that price target and i got gave myself till september 16th so that price target conservatively Let's see, 650, 630, yeah. So 650 kind of for the top end, just so it's conservative. And then the whole time range basically, because that's September 14th and these are after that. So we'll see if the bear market rally is over, probably cut out of these pretty quick because they might need momentum over the market, but I don't know. See, ASML, like I don't I don't know how that thing moves. Maybe it'll just totally inverse the market. Um, BB looks good. Some of you guys were shouting this out. I think you heard me down row. Uh, and then check that out and it looks good. Got the same, same sort of good looking um, bullish reversals down here. Bottom triangle, bottom wedge. So there's the price target on that. What's nice about this one is it's shorter term. I think bear market rally, uh, it's, it's safer if it's short, a shorter term because you don't know when it's gonna end really, how long it's gonna last. Once we start going back bearish, and we're kind of market crashing again, then I think you get longer term stuff for that. Cause I think the downside is gonna be a lot, lo lot longer than the upside uh, once kind of it turns around. So those are plays I made. Um, Jimmy kind of just kind of hold shares and kick it till maybe tomorrow and a ton of volume and I FOMO in and 
then we rip rip rally <laughs> see you guys on discord thanks for watching peace out